Welcome back to Between Bells. CES brings people together to see the latest innovations and hear conversations about what the future of different industries look like. Our next guest is one of the speakers on a panel called Autonomous Transportation Moves Beyond the Vehicle. As we see advancements in self-driving and electric vehicle technologies, how are companies changing their strategy to offer new possibilities for workers and consumers? Joining us now is Sara Lukian, Director of Passenger Experience at Virgin Hyperloop. Sara, great to have you with us on the show today. So I understand you sat down with executives from Caterpillar and Aurora. What was your biggest takeaway from this session? Well, I think one of the biggest takeaways is just how uh, autonomy and autonomous vehicles are poised to really revolutionize 21st century transportation. Uh, from the perspective of Hyperloop, we actually have it a little bit easier than some of our colleagues at other companies because um, we're on a straight uh, track. So we're in an enclosed environment and it is just a much simpler environment for us to develop and commercialize that autonomous transportation. Uh, but it's a really exciting time ahead of us. Uh, I'm very hopeful about the future. Yeah, Sarah, I I'm glad you brought up that comparison of this singular track for the Hyperloop versus autonomous cars on the road. Uh, there is still this kind of psychological factor for autonomous vehicles on the road where you might be worried if there isn't a backup driver, you might not trust the experience as much. Do you think there is more trust in something like a Hyperloop or is this there this added layer that, oh my goodness, this is a completely new technology. It might take me a little bit more to overcome that fear of getting in this entirely new kind of pod. I mean, you've touched on a really important question, which is trust, of course. Um, I think once you break down the different aspects of the Hyperloop uh, and you compare them to what's already out there, it's a lot easier to wrap your mind around the technology uh, and it becomes much less intimidating. You know, I hear from a lot of people, oh, you know, I don't, I, I'm afraid to get into something that's going that fast. And yet people are doing it all the time when they get into a plane. Um, you know, they might have some qualms about autonomy, but autonomy is already included to a certain extent in a lot of different modes of transportation that we use, not least of them, of course, being tested in vehicles. Um, but the other, the other thing that I really want to get to in your question is, you know, I'm the director of passenger experience. It is my job among other things to ensure that we've created an environment that is approachable. Uh, you know, the engineers are working night and day to ensure that it's safe, it's effective, it's efficient, uh, but it, it, it doesn't matter. No one's ever gonna ride it if they don't feel like they can approach it first. And so that's something that I have on my mind pretty much all mm -hmm. of the time. Well, Sarah, what does that mean? Making the experience approachable and making people feel comfortable? Great question. So I think one of the things that we've seen a lot in depictions of transportation of the future is a kind of dystopian effect. It's at least for me, I think of it as kind of um, super fast, chrome, sleek, uh, darker colors, blues, purples, chromes, sharky, kind of a sharky effect is the way that I like to describe it. And we've really moved away from that. If you look at our passenger vehicle that I and my colleague Josh Geigel rode in, um, it's, it's white, it feels clean, comfortable, there's cushioning, um, and, and we're really going for more human-centric design. Now, it's important to note that that vehicle is not our final production vehicle. That was just for this testing moment. Um, and so the final vehicle is going to have a lot more design elements, organic touches, uh, textures, sounds, even smells that make it a much more palatable, mm. calming environment to get into. Wow, smells, that's not something I would have thought of. That's interesting to hear. What about something like windows? You know, having some kind of visual outside where it doesn't feel like you're in a tube going super fast. Yeah, so we get the question about windows a fair amount, and I, I totally get it. You know, I'm the kind of person who, on a plane, I love to sit by the window and look out. Um, but, you know, we're, we, we have these magnetically levitated pods gliding at high speed through a tube, right? And so there's actually, we could have windows and there would be nothing to see in the tube. Um, a lot of people cite the windows as a way of, of mitigating either claustrophobia or a fear of 
uh, having some kind of motion sickness. Um, but what's important to remember is that there are, there are other very effective means of addressing those. Those are valid concerns. Although on the Hyperloop, because we're magnetically levitated and on this straight guideway, there's none of that lateral turbulence that you get on on a plane or the vibrations on a train or you know wheel on road and so it's actually and this was my experience a much smoother ride um, with much lower likelihood of, of any kind of discomfort um, but in the conversations that i've had and some of the market research that i've done we've really been probing what are people looking for when they ask for windows and some of it is is those things and some of it is just a desire to feel connected to the outside world, to know where you are in time and space. Um, and so there are other things we can do, like potentially having a skylight that emits mm. natural light, um, that even has an orb that replicates sun, the sun or the sunlight, um, that makes you feel like you're really still connected with the outside. There, there are a number of things, you know, like a, a journey tracker like that, so you know where you are in the journey. Because at the end of the day, look, we've all traveled in vehicles without windows. It might be an elevator for a shorter ride, or it might be that plane that I was just talking about where, you know, they force you to close the window or they darken it, or it's night and there's nothing to see. We gain comfort with that because it's what we're familiar with. And my hope is that, um, you know, in very short order, the Hyperloop experience will not only be what people are familiar with, but it will be the new standard for passenger experience. Well, Sarah, I have to admit, you've already made me feel more comfortable about potentially getting in a Hyperloop pod in the future. So thank you for that. And also thank you for your time. That's Sarah Lukian, Director of Passenger Experience at Virgin Hyperloop. Now let's stick with CES and give you our CES moment of the day. Here's one that stood out to us. Targus announced a virus killing keyboard light and an antimicrobial backpack. The computer company is helping consumers stay healthy amid the pandemic. The UVC LED light sits above your keyboard and mouse and disinfects these high touch accessories. It automatically kicks into gear for five minutes every hour and it won't begin the cleaning cycle until when you're not using those devices, which is detected through motion sensors. Targus also announced a backpack with antimicrobial coating on key touch points, which helps to reduce the chances of picking up an illness. The light and backpack are both due in the spring of this year.